Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how OpenAI won, and I'll explain that in a minute, uh, because no, they really didn't, when a lawsuit levied against them by a news outlet over using their content for AI training. This is a really contentious subject, because there have been many a time where an AI company or a nonprofit making like an AI model or maybe some kind of data set used for AI training has ended up saying, you know what? Let's just sprinkle in a little bit of copyrighted material we don't have the license to. Or at least has had claimed that that has happened. Basically, the long and short of it is this isn't the first lawsuit of this nature. There are many. There's even one levied by the New York Times against OpenAI right now. And it's gotten so far that, op that the New York Times has literally been able to get the source code for OpenAI stuff via like discovery they've managed to uh, to attain that a judge said yeah that's fine so it's it's kind of a big deal uh open ai's legal team isn't having the best day right now i don't think but let's read this through so this is an article from reuters uh on november 7th a new york federal judge dismissed a lawsuit against against open ai that claimed it misused articles from news outlets raw story and alternate to train its large language models uh, the judge, Colleen McMahon, said that the outlets could not show enough harm to support the lawsuit, but allowed them to file a new complaint. So they threw this one out, but they're saying, you know what, you can do it again if you want to try again. So OpenAI won this. They kind of skirted past it, but their attorney uh, basically went ahead and said, no, we can address the concerns the court identified through an amended complaint. So they are going to do this again. So they filed the lawsuit on February. They said that thousands of their articles were used without permission to train OpenAI's popular chatbot, ChatGPT, and that it reproduces their copyrighted material when prompted. And this case is a part of a wave of lawsuits against OpenAI and other tech companies by authors, visual artists, music publishers, and other copyright owners over the data used to tr train their generative AI systems. Again, this isn't the first instance. Uh, some of this goes way far back, too. I think there's like an old AI... Don't fully quote me on this. Take it with a grain of salt, because I might be misremembering. But I do remember there was like an AI training data set from like, I think, 2018 or so that a lot of AI companies originally used, or at least AI projects originally used for training large language models. And some of it even contained like YouTube subtitles and stuff. So in like pirated books so this isn't the first instance instance of this stuff happening this has happened many times before and the copyright laws involving this are a little shaky because go figure we we didn't really write laws to factor in the fact that we'd be having uh talking and maybe eventually soon walking ai robots that we can interact with we, we didn't expect that we'd have to be teaching these things. Um, I, so I guess our lawmakers never really factored that in. So that's why there's so many lawsuits. So, and for example, that lawsuit filed by the New York Times in December was the first from a media outlet, and it's still going. Uh, this one was thrown out because apparently the lawyer basically said, nah, I have, I have no clue if this is really the, the type of harm we think a lawsuit needs to be made over, but if you want to go ahead and remake the lawsuit, you can do that. So that's a little bit long and the short of it. Uh, one thing I do kind of want to cover, it's a little bit of an older article, but I still feel like it's kind of relevant just to show you about how prevalent these lawsuits are. Uh, the New York Times just has the source code for OpenAI stuff. Yeah, they were able to obtain that through discovery. Now, it's under some like heavy lock and key, uh, basically on a air-gapped computer in a secure room on an undisclosed location that requires a government-issued ID to get in uh, and all kinds of stuff. It's uh, very interesting. So uh, whatever like limitations that the judge basically put on it were definitely heavy. And that part of that makes sense because they don't really want OpenAI's trade secrets just, you know, going out because of all this but it just shows it just goes to show how far some of these people suing open ai are trying to go and i can kind of get it you know 
you, it's just a really weird contentious subject. I guess here's where some of my opinion comes in. I guess one of the things is where do you make the distinction of, oh, it's just like a normal human learning like they would just by reading a book or is it not really that because that human's using it for profit? It's a AI training and that kind of stuff is really a really, really weird subject. And it just kind of spans across AI as a whole. It's it's just it's interesting to me. Now, I'm kind of rambling now. So uh, admittedly, that's kind of all for today. I thank you guys for watching. If you've watched my channel before, you might notice something's a little bit different in this video. That's because I rearranged my room. So now you get to see Joey over there. And you get to see the bread bunny. Wouldn't you know it? It's a bunny made out of bread. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So yeah, thank you guys for watching my video. Like, comment, subscribe. You can check out other videos right ooh, ooh, over there. And those are videos YouTube thinks you'll like. I suggest you go check them out. And yeah, stay safe, you guys. Take care out there.